Hey everyone, Matt here from Pyramind. Welcome back to me. I've uh, been away for a while, I apologize. It's been a very busy time around here. Some very exciting things happening at Pyramind. I had to go work, uh, but now I'm back to make some videos, yay. The first one I'm doing today is in regard to our new partnership with Loop Cloud from the Loop Masters folks. Loop Cloud, for those of you who don't know, is an online sample library solution. It's cloud-based, so it lives off in the cloud in the browser, but they have something new in version 2.0, which we're gonna dig into today. Maybe you've heard about it, maybe you've seen it, maybe you've seen some other content out there talking about how cool Loop Cloud 2 is, and I gotta say, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna kind of put it through a little bit of its paces today, not just talk about what it does, but actually show you in action how it works, why it's pretty cool, and why it's something you wanna know about. Uh, first thing you need to know is that it is free you can just make an account. That's always nice when things are free. And yes, from now on, you're always going to see me do free. Yay, this is my yay, it's free face. Uh, it's free, you can just make an account and get started directly. You download the things you want, you buy the things you want, and that's it. Uh, I'm gonna show you all the different formats that are in there. You can download them in a multiple of formats, very cool. Um, number two is if you're a Pyramind student, you get free stuff. Yay. If you don't have your Loop Cloud account yet and you are a Paramind student, just email me and I'll get you set up. You will have five high caliber packs from various producers that'll be added into your library. And you're gonna get uh, roughly 4,000 sounds di deposited directly into your account. And for every week that you're on the platform, you'll get a free 150 sounds every week. Just cool. Who doesn't love free sounds? 150 of them every week. Um, of course, if you want more than what's deposited in your account, you can always just go to the store and go shopping and I'll show you how that works today. Um, because it is cloud-based, obviously you need an internet connection, um, but one of the newer things that's pretty cool is um, it was always kind of annoying to go over here and search for sounds and then bring them over here into your session and try and figure out if they work. You don't have to do that anymore. It's now connecting directly to your DAW and you can audition and preview the sounds at tempo, at pitch, in the track, load it up with plugins, check it all out before you even buy the damn thing. So you can audition until you're blue in the face for free, for free. Okay, so there are a couple of things that are pretty cool about 2.0. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and dig right into them. Um, one of the first things I'll show you is the preview. I'm gonna show you the auto pitch and some of the pitch functions that you can deal with. Show you a little bit about searching, show you a little bit about downloading, bringing them into your session, and we'll have some fun. So without further ado, here we go, Loop Cloud 2.0. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna um, just pull up one of my tracks, just something I've been kind of banging around with. Uh, I'm only gonna loop one clip or one scene because that's really all you need. Uh, it's a little bit of an empty scene, kind of the intro. One of the first things you need to do when doing this, uh, obviously I'm using Ableton, you could use your DAW, is connect the two. Uh, admittedly, when I first did it, the connection did not work. A simple restart of the computer made it all work. I haven't had a problem since. Piece of advice, if you're gonna be doing this, since you are gonna be previewing sounds live off of the cloud, you wanna make sure you have a solid internet connection and anything that's a background service, uh, Gmail, that it's constantly updating, Twitter, Facebook, anything that's sort of constantly reaching out into the cloud, uh, Google Drive backups, file stream backups, things like that, you wanna turn those off because it's gonna really slow things down, like uncomfortably slow things down. So I have them all off right now. Um, one of the interesting things about Loop Cloud is that it is a plugin. And so I have this MIDI track here. Notice MIDI track, not audio track. Not sure how that works out, but it is indeed a MIDI track. And on the MIDI track, I have Loop Cloud. It's a plugin. It is under plugins and under Loop Cloud. Simple. So you drag it onto your track and you pull it up and you look at it and you say, uh, what the hell do I do now? It's just a set of meters. What's really going on is that it is firing off code in the background to connect to the actual application. So you need the plugin and you need the application and then they connect in the background. Uh, when you open up the application, as I have now, you'll look for this lightning bolt right here that says connected to Ableton. Again, my first tests, this did not work. Again, a simple restart made it work. So while they're connected, you'll notice this, this PPM this BPM of 105 actually comes from my BPM of 105. So if I were to come over here and change it to 90 and come back over here, immediately Loop Cloud refreshes at 90, which is nice. So that I can pretty much work in Ableton, uh, set it for whatever tempo I need in the moment, and everything's going to audition at tempo. 
Now that they're connected, it's really pretty simple. Uh, when I hit play in Ableton, um, the preview in Loop Cloud plays as well. Uh, welcome to Loop Cloud. This is the application. Um, right now I've got to search for a 909 in here, but normally this would not be in here. Um, usually it will take you to your library, and I want to point out these two right here. The library, these are sounds that are in my account, but this is everything. So when you go to the store, it's going to pull up all of the packs, all of the libraries. Um, they're going to show up with real pretty pictures of everybody who's made the packs. Boom, there it is. Whatever the cool hip new thing is, is going to show up in the front page. Obviously, that's what they're going to want you to check out, but you can scroll until you're blue in the face. And most of them have these three buttons on the right where you can toggle through each of the subsets therein. Now, if for whatever reason you don't want to search by picture, which makes sense because your ears can't see the picture, uh, you can always search across the other tags as well. So you can search by instruments, which is what I tend to do a lot because I usually know what kind of instrument I'm looking for. Uh, you can search by genre if that's your MO. You can search by label if there's a particular label who makes stuff that you particularly like. That's cool. Uh, the formats I mentioned earlier. So you can download them just raw audio, Apple Loops, construction kits, Rex files for you reason folks out there. Um, I tend to use the waves, but there you go. And then you can search by key and BPM. And this is neat because if I say do G sharp, A flat, major, it's going to start searching for everything that's out there in the key of A flat or G sharp major. So everything here is already at the key that I could potentially want. So it really helps you limit your focus to just the stuff that's going to be in your key. If you have no idea what key you're in, man, I can't help you. You just got to know. Of course, you can always do it by ear. And let's assume you have no idea what key you're in. Okay, so let's clear this out and clear this out. And let's just say I'm searching by instruments. Okay, I did this a little bit earlier and I went looking for a sitar. So I type sitar and then all of the sitars will come up. Now, they usually have a pitch tag in the name. This one, for example, is the Kumar SE A lap to A flat. Okay, let's assume that that's an A flat. This one's in D, this one's in D, this one's in D, this one's in C. So the pitches are going to be all over the place. Um, even though you can search by key, if, again, if you don't know your key, um, you can also just hit auto key. But you still have to know your key. So know your damn keys. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Sorry, you should know your keys. Um, I'm in the key of A flat, which is G sharp. And so if I hit auto key, if I play this one at A flat, it's going to play at A flat. But if I click the one at D, it's also going to play at A flat. Let's first get familiar with what we're working with here. So this is the first scene. It sounds a little bit like this. It's pretty simple. It's two chords back and forth. It's an A flat to a G flat. It just goes back and forth while it's kind of figuring out what it's doing. Now you can see, you can see the loop cloud meters are doing nothing. It's just playing these two chords. And then if I go over to loop cloud and then let's actually shrink this view a little bit. Now, if I go back over to Ableton and hit play, if I just hit play, it's going to pick it up at tempo. particularly think that sample is going to work for me, so I'll move on to the next one. But again, what's happening is that it's picking up the timeline in the tempo of my session. Now, I'll do it one more time, and I'm going to ask you a question before I do it. What's wrong with this playback? Because something's wrong with this playback, and I'm setting you up for something. So, what's wrong with this playback? And if you figured out that what's happening is that it's always going back to the beginning and it's doing a pattern, you'd be correct. And the question is why? And the answer is the other cool thing about Loop Cloud 2.0. You can set rhythmic patterns and use this to audition your sound. Now I'm going to put it in auto. And it's going to audition the whole loop now. Now this particular sound isn't going to work for me, so I'll move on to the next one. But again, they're all playing in the key of G-sharp because I have auto key activated. That's a 
the fun little sitar line. Now watch what happens if I take auto key off. See, it's in the key of G, but I need it in the key of G sharp. So when I hit the auto key at G sharp, it moves it up into my pitch. And now I can really audition it against what's going on in the background. one works. So I'm going to keep hold of this one. Okay. But again, auto key sets it to the key of your song. Everything you audition plays in time with Ableton at that pitch when you have auto key activated. Again, if you want to hear something in a rhythm, you can choose from these auto patterns of rhythms. Let's demonstrate that first. Um, in fact, let's come over, let's clear the sitar. Let's just go to 909s and I don't know, let's just see if there's some kind of kick drum that might be cool. Um, we can audition this one. So that's obviously a full loop, but if I change it from auto to say kick one, so I get a little rhythm. It's a neat way to kind of pre-audition pre what might be happening. Ooh, I've got a meeting. Uh, Pre-audition what might be happening in a loop where you're only looking at a little piece of it in a particular rhythm. Okay, so that's terrific. I can search for sounds, search for instruments, search for genre, search for time, tempo. Don't really need that anymore because now that it's synced to my DAW, tempo came from the DAW as it is. Uh, if I don't know my key, that's fine. I can also just figure it out. Uh, let's say I have auto key off and I don't search by key and I go back to that sitar sound. Um, you're not without help if you find a cool loop, but you don't know what key it is. I think it was this Kumar one. Okay, let's use that one. Now it is playing at the key of D, but if I want, I can just grab the pitch. it up and down until my ear tells me it's in the right place. So do you really need to know your key? Yes, you need to know your key. What's wrong with you? Okay, uh, you should know your key. There's nothing wrong with you. I just think you should know your key. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, so searching by key, searching by pattern, linked to your tempo, linked to the pitch of whatever you're looking for. Audition all day long, it's free. And when you're ready to buy something, that's when things get interesting. Obviously, if it's in your library, you can just download it. This one's asking me to buy the file. I would then buy the file and it's going to tell me, you know, put in your credit card or this, that, and the other thing. Uh, I don't know that I have my, I, I probably have credits in there, so it looks like it worked. If you don't have credits in there, it's probably gonna ask you for your credit card number, so put it in there and buy the damn sound. When you do that, you get the option to take the original, which is at the original pitch, or if you've either done auto key or have messed with the pitch slider, you can grab the processed file already at the pitch that you want, okay? From here, you can simply grab it and drag it right onto your clip and boom, there's your sound. I didn't do the auto key, which is why it's out of key right now. I could, of course, go over, grab the transposition and knock it up one. Maybe that'll do it. I'm not sure. All the more reason why you need to know your keys. Just saying. Boom. One semitone puts it right where it needs to be. Okay, so that's a big recap on Loop Cloud. Most coolest things, yes, I just said most coolest. Well, the most coolest thing about it is that it's live, it's in your DAW, and it's... Now, while I go back, let's say I don't want this for whatever reason, okay? And I go back to Loop Cloud and I say, yeah, that's cool. Maybe I want something else. I don't know, maybe I'm looking for mandolin. Who knows? 
while it's searching for mandolins and while you're auditioning all of this, you have the right to do more than just grab a sound and drag it in there. So let's say I put it back in auto key and let's hunt around for something. Cool, let's say I like that. Now if I go back over to Ableton, hit play, go back over to Loop Cloud, hit play. I'm gonna lower the volume a little bit. Here in Ableton, on the loop cloud function, if I want to have delay on it, let's go grab a delay. In fact, let's go grab pedal first. I also want to put in, uh, let's find simple delay, because it's always useful, and turn the mix way down, because I'm doing it insert style, which is kind of a no-no, but oh well, do it again. Let's do triplets on triplets. Fun little polyrhythm going on there. The point is I can load up as many plugins as I want on the chain and really get a sense of what the sound is gonna sound like in mix before I buy anything. So in a nutshell, that's Loop Cloud 2.0. Make sure it's 2.0. Download the right version and everything pretty much works. Syncs to your DAW, syncs to tempo, syncs to pitch. You can buy it or grab it from your library, audition it, play it, preview through plugins before you do anything. Once you've got it, grab it, drag it, throw it onto your desktop. Uh, throw it into your session and you're good to go. That's the preferred workflow is to grab it and drag it right into your session. Um, if you go to download it and then search your file hierarchy for the file itself, it's kind of buried. Uh, it's nested within folders, within folders, within folders. So it's a little bit of a process to go find it on your desktop. Uh, what I would do would be to make sure that you grab the proper name. This one would be CEF underscore 93D underscore 6-8 Mandola, etc. Grab the name and then do a search on your desktop for it because trying to find it in the nested hierarchy is kind of a pain in the ass. And then of course, once you've got all of your sounds in here to make life easy for yourself, be sure to collect all and save. Again, Pyramind students get access to five high quality packs and 4,000 sounds deposited right into your library. They're yours right out the gate. And there you get 150 sounds every week. Uh, this is a very cool tool. I don't often go searching for samples or loops, uh, but every once in a while you're stuck and you're just looking for inspiration. You're looking for a sound that you just don't have and don't have the time to create and are really not even sure what to do with it. So in that case, something like Loop Cloud is incredibly useful. So I encourage you all to go check it out. And of course, if you are a Pyramind student already and don't have your account yet, email me, we'll get you set up. And if you're not a Pyramind student, you can of course enroll in courses. Just saying. Uh, of course, as always, you can book time with me, Matt Donner, uh, right through Pyramind's uh, mentorship network. I will have more videos for you coming out shortly. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you to our friends at Loop Masters, Leon and the gang. Thank you for partnering with us. We're very excited about this. We're gonna be getting this into our students' hands very shortly, integrating it into the curriculum as well. Uh, it's a very, very cool, fast, easy to use tool. Very good for inspiration, finding things you might be looking for exactly, or really not knowing what the hell you're looking for at all. Until next time, I'll see you then. It's Matt at Pyramine. Take care. See you out in the interwebs. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pyramine tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at pyramine.com. Thank <laughs> you.